The core problem with React.js state management is of course that we get app component, we got sub components, and if I want to change a text, I can't do this directly. Instead, I have to inform the parent, change the text there, and if I got additional components, well, then it gets even more complex. Therefore, Redux has a different approach. Here we have our view or our application, we might say, and in this application, in any given component, we dispatch actions. So one action might be change name to stick with the previous example. This action then is ran through a reducer. That is where the Redux, Redux, reducer, where the name comes from. A reducer has one simple job or task. It takes the action, handles the action. So if the action is change name, the reducer will have a method which knows what to do upon a change name action, namely change the name. And it will then take the old state and manipulate it in a way that it now reflects this action. So it takes the old state, adds or executes this single action on the old state and gives us back a new state. Now, this is best done immutable, which means don't change the old state, instead take it as a basis and then create a brand new state. So kind of a copy of the old state with the change in place. So the old state stays untouched, we just create a new state and return this. Note, you don't have to follow this immutable approach, and I will come back to this in a future video, but it's a good practice to do so because it gives you unique states in your application, which makes it very clear at which point of time you had which state. So we're in this reducer and we're getting back a new state. Now this state is then stored in, well, a store, and we have only one store in the whole application in our Redux world. This store has one simple task, store our state. That's why it's called store. And we may have multiple reducers, but we only have one store. So multiple reducers for multiple parts of our application, but only one store which holds one unique store. And then our application can subscribe to that store or specific components can subscribe to parts of that score, store, parts of the state they need. And whenever the state is updated and therefore a new state is passed to the store, the store will automatically send it to all the components interested and the application will update. So back to the previous example, we had our app component with all the other components here, but now we also have the store. And if we want to change something in the user component from the main component, well then we dispatch the action and reduce the state or change the state. And then we pass the state to all the components interested. That's all. So that's the theory. Let's start seeing this in action.